All right, good afternoon, everyone. Everyone okay? Appreciate you guys uh, being patient with the uh, technical difficulties. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, my name is Todd Hunter, I'm DAB's, uh, one of DAB's Assistant National Communications Director. Uh, Marine Corps veteran, I was, uh, was a combat correspondent in the Marines, got out, uh, went to uh, grad school in, in Washington, D.C., where I uh, got an internship, worked at the White House Office of Digital Strategy, and then came over um, to DAB. And with me today, Mary Deaver, Air Force veteran. She's a broadcast journalist. We, we, we go way back. We were actually uh, uh, classmates together at MOS school in, in, in Fort Meade, Maryland. And now we, uh, we both are part of the team that is in uh, Washington, D.C., the communications team. So. Anyway, we are here, obviously, uh, for the Media Outreach and Social Networking Seminar. I'm going to go over, uh, I handle our media relations, uh, so I'm going to go over the media outreach aspect of it, and then uh, when, when I'm done, Mary here uh, will uh, go into detail about social networking and so forth. Um, so that's our quick introduction. I'm going to go over some tips on media relations, and then, like I said, Mary's going to get into social networking, give you some tips, tricks, reminder, and then we will wrap up. Uh, please ask you all to save uh, questions, comments for later as best you can, because we're going to have a question and answer period toward the end there. Um, so I, uh, we're going to go in and. and get right away, what is media relations, right? I, before I kind of give you guys the, the textbook definition of media relations, I kind of, I want to hear from you guys. So if anyone wants to raise their hand and kind of give me what, what you think that is. There's one. That's pretty good, and, but it, it's not only before the stuff hits a fan, it's, it's while it's hitting the fan and after it hits a fan and gets thrown all over the room, right? Uh, which is a really, really horrible uh, visual. But, uh, so, no, that's, that's spot on. That's in a nutshell, you, you nailed it, ma'am. What's your name? Sandy Price. Sandy. Everyone give a hand to Sandy. <laughs> Well, and that's how you know. That's how you know. Yeah, you've, you've dealt with the stuff in the fan and getting thrown around the room. All right, so uh, the definition is working with the media for the purpose of informing the public of an organization's mission, policies, and practices in a positive, consistent, and credible manner. Um, so typically, uh, when, when we're talking about media relations, it, it means coordinating directly with the people responsible for producing the news. That is, um, a lot of times, uh, news directors, assignment desks, uh, it can be individual reporters, um, and so forth. That's, that's who we're talking to, when, and granted, there's social media, which, like I said, Mary's going to get into, but when we're talking about traditional media, those are the folks we're, we're really aiming to get the attention of uh, because they're the, basically the gatekeepers of what is going to uh, be on their platform. Uh, and so a uh, couple reasons uh, to, why do we talk to media? And I'm gonna throw this out there again, not you, Sandy. You already had your turn, I might give you one later. So, but what's a good reason to talk to media? So the public understands who the DAB is instead of just transportation. Bingo. I don't know if everyone heard he said, so the public knows who DAB is beyond just our transportation network, although there's nothing wrong with telling the transportation network. No, <laughs> you have 90% of them, all they see is the van running around the, the town, and they don't know about the service work and the other work. And we, and we do a lot of it, and it's good to highlight every every bit of it we can. 
Um, so some things that, like for an example, some of the services we actually, let me go for it. Um, we also want to establish DAV as a, a trusted source on veteran-related issues um, and, and generate among our own community uh, so they can campaign individually and collectively for the betterment of, of our organization. So uh, some items, um, for example, our Women Veterans Report. Granted, DAV, as a national organization, when, when we uh, publish those reports, we reach out, uh, we'll publish some on a newswire and so forth, but that it doesn't preclude uh, any uh, department or chapter from, from basically repurposing that same press release to their local media to get more eyes on it. Um, same thing with our, our vision for veterans report that came out at the beginning of the new Congress. Um, and, you know, what, let's, a good topic du jour when it comes to uh, veteran related issues is burn pits, right? Or, or not, not just burn pits, any sort of toxic exposure, Agent Orange and so forth. So, um, you know, any, for example, you have a, a veteran in your chapter who it has been negatively impacted by that uh, that issue. It's a good um, it's a good connection to to basically sell to the. I don't want to say well, I did say sell, but you know a lot of media outreach in a lot of ways is a bit of salesmanship uh, in in a way when you're reaching out to folks because uh, you want to get their attention and, and explain to them um, why it is why it's important to get. Um, to get coverage of a, of a certain topic. And then if you can use a, a veteran who was, um, who's affected and has a personal story and can, sh and can share their personal story, that's, that's really how reporters uh, like to report on stuff. It's one thing to say, oh, here's a, the burn pits have been hurting our nation's heroes, right? Uh, it's a completely other one to, to for them to be able to tell that story through someone else's experience. Um, so tips for good media relations. We want to uh, make a local connection to any anything it might be that we're reaching out by. I think I kind of just went over that one. Uh, we also want to engage on social media, get to the point and, and follow up when um, once a story does air. Uh, nothing journalists uh, like more than to see their their work uh, recognized, uh, praised uh, when when it deserves praise and and, and echoed and, and disseminated out further. Right. Uh, so we really want to uh, uh, show show the folks our appreci appreciation for for what they've done to help us. So um, another one uh, when. Um, it's really important that you get the timing of any distribution out correctly. Uh, uh, this kind of goes without saying, but you follow the news cycle, right? Um, a lot of times you're not going to want to uh, get out a press release or send a uh, email pitch to news desks on Friday at, at 1600, right? It's just going to get lost over the weekend. Um, Monday morning is is a good time. Monday and Tuesday mornings are good times uh, to really reach out to folks so they can kind of plan the rest of their week. Uh, sounds like someone's trying all the doors over here. Hopefully they get the right one, right? Let's see if they get go for number three next. They'll get here. Okay. Oh, there. <laughs> All right, welcome. <laughs> I'm sorry, you, I, I apologize. I, even though I'm wearing glasses, I have absolutely horrible eyesight, so I'm trying to read my next notes here. Okay, so what makes a, a good story, right? Um, current events uh, and, and issues, that's, those are the things media is looking for. Um, uh, originality, novelty, uniqueness, anything of that sort. 
personal achievement, right? A lot of times we have uh, members, say a volunteer driver who has just driven his or her 50,000th mile on behalf of veterans. That's something that, um, that will, you know, when pitched correctly to uh, media outlets, they will, that's something they're gonna wanna grab onto there. Uh, anniversaries, landmarks, dates, um, anything like that. What's, uh, you know, PTSD Awareness Month is September, June. Uh, suicide Prevention Month, uh, things like that. D-Day, uh, the Iwo Jima flag raising, stuff like that. Um, And that goes under the uh, holidays and awareness days. So I want to give an example of some successful media outreach. I'm not sure if anyone here has heard of the Claremont Sun. Uh, it is a local paper in Ohio that um, Department of uh, Ohio Commander, or is it adjutant? John Plahovnicek? Is he in here? In here, John? I'm sorry, are you the adjutant or commander? Okay, past department commander John Plahovnicek. Um, he reached, and I'm gonna, he's gonna come up here in just a second to tell his story, but this is a good example. He, he basically has a running column in that local paper uh, with, you know, basically taking all of DAV's critical policy issues or issues of the day and getting, it runs every week uh, I believe there, I mean, look, we get it, John. <laughs> I mean, we get it. Look, I, look at all these placements that, um, and, and he's going to come up here and kind of tell you how, how the sausage was made and, and, and getting all this done. But what the, what I think is kind of overlooked in, in having something like this is the tertiary benefits of it because not only is he getting out there establishing DAV as uh, a thought leader, but by uh, harnessing that relationship, he's getting more coverage with uh, DAV chapter 63, right? So it's, it's more than um, uh, one placement by getting these. And John, would you mind coming on up and, and giving these folks some insight on uh, how you established uh, that relationship with the editor of, of the Claremont Sun and, and so forth. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, past department commander, past department of Ohio commander, John Plahovnicek. Thank you, Todd. Uh, as some of the other people in the audience are, are, might be aware, I'm an army, just an army soldier. And, uh, what I learned to do is that there's a lot of information put out in, on the websites that, that the military has. You can go to Military Times, you can read things, you can read things in Stars and Stripes newspapers, you can name, read press releases from the VA. And I'm trying to focus primarily on disabled veterans. Now, I look at disabled veterans because I am one. And when I run across some information, and I look at it, and I think maybe other people might want to know this information. And for the past year, I've been seeing a lot of stories dealing with disabled veterans, but it just stops at the press release site. So I contacted uh, the local newspaper the local newspaper services uh, an area of about 75,000 people in a three county area. And I touched base with the editor. Uh, I contacted, I, first of all, I looked at the newspaper, saw what the newspaper was, stories they were carrying. And I noticed that uh, they do have something called an op-ed page, opinion, editorial opinion page for that. And they had things in there from recipes to cooking to farm life to other things like that. I contact, I found out when his publishing deadlines are. I called him when he wasn't busy, and I asked him if I could send him a column, just one column, dealing with disabled veterans, if he would be interested in it. 
I tailored the column as an opinion column. I took 75% of it was information news. The first one dealt with the two decisive victories that the disabled veterans had, one on the uh, 20th of December and also one on the 5th of January of 2021, which really didn't receive that much publicity on that. I said, uh, did the article, 75% of that article was basically information that I picked up from reading stories in the news media on it. I tailored that article and I put my opinion on it. My opinion was about 25% of it, of the article for that. He ran with that, he liked it, he gave me a call, asked if I could do another article. So I said, okay, I did another article for him on hypertension, why hypertension was not included on the presumptives that we want to get for our disabled veterans. Uh, spin back on that, he liked that, and he asked me if I would do another column for that, the third column, and finally he said, could you do one on every week on disabled veterans? Yeah. So I said, okay, so. <laughs> and, and you don't have to be a, you don't have to be a brain surgeon or a writer going to journalism school or anything like that. You just go through the internet, hit stars and stripes, hit the other media outlets, you run across topics that are current, and that's what they want to see. I basically followed the tip line that Todd had, and doing that, find out, number one, who the editor is, look at the newspaper so you can talk intelligently about the newspaper. And I'm not gonna make the New York Times or I'm not gonna make the Cincinnati Inquirer the big newspaper. I'm looking for the small, rural, community-based newspapers. And Cincinnati is a city of about 300,000, but we have four small, community-related newspapers that just take care of the neighborhood. Editors are looking for current information. They're not worried about what happened five years ago. They're looking for something that's current for a specific audience. And we do have a lot of veterans in Claremont County, Highland County, Adams County. They like reading about that. Uh, the third art, uh, the article I did on hypertension, uh, on the bottom of the article I put my name and my uh, email address uh, for that. I was contacted by a lady in upstate New York, and she said she saw the article when she had hypertension, that article came up, she had some questions on hypertension, and I explained to her what I was doing. I found out that she was working uh, at a hospital that worked, and she was primarily working with veterans in terms of filling out paperwork. So I asked her, is she getting any recognition for her work? She said no, I explained to her what the LVAP program was, uh, she liked the LVAP program, uh, so now I signed her up for the LVAP program for my chapter, and uh, I, she sent me an email every month about the number of hours she puts it in, and I just put it down for our chapter for the credit for the LVAP hours. But that's at least reaching out and, and getting that information that somebody is helping disabled veterans, and we're being that. Now, the first series of articles that Todd showed dealt primarily with the op-ed pieces. All I'm doing is taking newspaper, article, newspaper articles that I read online, tailoring them to a specific community, and then regurgitating that information out in the local newspaper for our people in the rural areas or in the community areas to read. And a lot of people read it because number one, it came, the small newspapers contained obits for the local people in the area. They contain uh, people getting uh, graduating from high school, graduating from college, being in the military, uh, local news, whereas the big city newspapers don't carry that information. The second vein that I talk about is what my chapter does. And whenever my chapter does something, I just write it up in three or four paragraphs, I send it to the editor, he saves my butt by fixing up all the wrong grammar that I use in the articles for that, and uh, he publishes, and if I get a a picture, it's even better because he's looking to fill space every week. He has a pressure line for doing that. Now, in the op-ed pieces, I, I don't focus on the DAV too much. I focus on other aspects of being disabled veterans because if I start focusing on the op-ed pages on the DAV, it's going to look like he's showing favoritism for that. So that's why I try to keep it as general as possible. I touch bases like on the, the situation with banished veterans uh, who are now uh, being looked at about being called back into the United States and having their discharges looked at uh, for that. So that covers a lot of people, not only disabled veterans. Uh, and I also try to be as non-biased as possible. I'm also a member of the v, uh, VFW. Now the VFW has something called call to action. 
And what they do is that they do identically what we do with our Commander's Action Network. So when I did an article about how uh, on Memorial Day people usually say, you know, thank you for your service, uh, I put in the article about you can ask them to do something more than just saying that they can go either for the Commander's Action Network or could they could do the VFW uh, call to action. And that generates support from the VFW and also support for the DAV. Now the bottom line is getting legislation passed for those two veins. So if I do service for the DAV, it's also doing it for, for the VFW. It's showing that we're nonpartisan for that. But the main purpose I'm trying to do, trying to relate to you, is there are a lot of veterans out there looking for information, primarily on dis for disabled veterans and also for active veterans. What I'm trying to do is take that information that's available and putting it down on a local level because they're the ones who bought the newspaper for that. Uh, you don't have to be, as I said, a great, a great writer or anything. I, I just scribble notes. I, in fact, I handwrite all my articles before I type it in my typewriter. For it. Now we've got a computer, though, that does that, I guess. Uh, but I, I transmit it to uh, Brent Milam, uh, who's the editor of the newspaper. He likes what he sees. It helps him get his paper filled with news that's current, uh, not related. And uh, he likes what he sees. And, he, because he does that, he likes to continue reading about the DAV and, and what we do in terms of some of our activities. There's my, that's my driveway back there that we met for a meeting like that. It's just a, a little cut line that he put in there for that. But I got information that the DAV was meeting uh, for it even in the middle of the pandemic. Uh, the other one is uh, we participated in the Secretary's uh, second call to duty program for that. We got publicity for that and we helped get recognition of what the DAV was doing in terms of the election for that. So you don't have to be a great writer. Or, you don't, you just, all you have to do is put words together in a sentence and somebody's going to save your butt that wants to get the newspaper out and doesn't want to look like a dummy. And I'm fortunate enough that I, I do have an editor like that for the newspaper. And I imagine you probably have the same type of editors uh, that come out with community newspapers and you, you can do the same thing. Okay. very much, John. And so that is a, a perfect example. I, I think what he noted is, you know, it's not going to get in the New York Times, but it's going to get in front of, uh, you know, these folks in the local communities. And that's who, uh, you know, you, you folks at the chapter and department level uh, should, should be targeting. Um, one more thing that, that John mentioned was, uh, you know, he, he, in the op-eds, he keeps it uh, not so much DAV centric, rather disabled veteran centric, and, and that is perfectly fine. But the uh, the other part of that uh, that was glo you know kind of glossed over a little bit is at the end of uh, on every single one of these articles, uh, it's it's called a boilerplate where um, you know at, at the bottom it says John. Uh, you know, is a past department commander of, of disabled American veterans. And, th and that's all we might need uh, for someone to see because that really helps establish us as, as thought leaders um, in the veteran community. Um, I don't want to go over my time here too much with, uh, I want to give Mary some equal time here and have some time at the end for questions, but uh, real quick, uh, some interview tips for when, uh, say, you know, you guys are having a, a clothing or food drive or, or fundraiser or whatever it might be at a local chapter that you're able to get um, that you're able to get media out to. Uh, one, uh, always make sure you got some sort of DAV gear on, preferably uh, a, a shirt or a hat, because most times uh, when a cameraman is setting you up for an interview, they're going to do what you call a bust shot, uh, which is from bust up. Uh, so make sure you got something with a DAV logo on if you can. Um, we're going to establish some ground rules, right? Uh, you know, uh, just real quick with the reporter. Hey, we're here to talk about this, this fundraiser, whatever it might be that's going on, um, because you know that's really kind of not the place to be talking about what you know we think of the the vaccine mandate that that's going on at VA or whatnot. I mean, that's got nothing to do with a DAV fundraiser. So establish those rules with them. Um, 
and most importantly, I, I think on here is to stay within DAV's resolutions and remain nonpartisan. Um, you know, sometimes reporters will, you know, just in their their questioning will will try and uh, try and get something out of you that maybe isn't, and, and that's why it's important to establish the ground rules. Um, but you know, we we got to stay. Uh, focused on what the purpose of the story is that they are there for. Um, if you can, try and anticipate the questions. Uh, I know all your moms told you this, always be truthful. And, you know, it's okay uh, to say you don't know something, um, but definitely don't ever say no comment because you are always on. No comment is a comment. Uh, so just remember that you're you're always on the record. And with that, I'm gonna give up the microphone here and let Mary get into uh, the social networking aspect and we'll have questions when she's done. So thank you very much, folks. Good afternoon, everybody. Are we awake? Uh, these guys are. How's everybody else? Everybody awake? All right, it's only day two, so I hope you're awake. Well, like Todd uh, gave me the introduction earlier, I'm Mary Deaver. I was in the Air Force uh, for 10 years doing public affairs, and over that time, just the whole uh, communications realm changed. Um, and, and that's kind of what I wanted to talk about on for social media. Uh, a couple of years ago, Todd and I kind of merged our briefings because they overlap so much now. It used to be, you know, to, to reach that media, you had to you know, call them, go to the office, things like this. Now you can incorporate that with your social media strategy. I'll talk a little bit about that, but by that I mean you can you can get your news out there, you can get your name and you can, you know, get the ideas out there just from social media as well. So that's what we're gonna talk about. So what is social networking? Online two-way form of sharing information. It's free. I mean, it might cost you a lot of time sometimes. We all go down that rabbit hole, but it is free. Who in here has a smartphone? Who does not have a smartphone? <laughs> exactly. It is rapidly becoming rarer and rarer to find somebody that does not have some sort of way to connect on social media. So if you put your departments and your chapters out there in the ether world, chances are you're gonna get a following of some sort. So why use it? This is where I was talking about some of the overlap. This makes sure that the people that follow your, and I'm not talking specifically Facebook, Twitter, I mean, all of these platforms, or one of these platforms, whatever works best for you in your community, you know your community better than, than we will. But, so whatever works for your community. Um, so it, it, it lets them know that we are staying up to date. It lets, you, lets them know what's going on legislatively, local and national. It, it lets them have feedback to you as well. It, lets, it opens up that conversation and makes it very easy to learn from them and to teach them and to engage the community around you. It can act as a motivational tool. You know, we have what we call campaigns, social media campaigns, calling people to action calling people to get on the Commander's Action Network or, again, something that's specific to your community or something that your chapter or your VA needs. Um, it's, it's also it's a way to influence and it, it helps you reach a target audience. What do I mean when I say a target audience? Well, it includes, as Todd's presentation was about, that media. You know, you can get the attention of local reporters, people like that John was saying, uh, who, who care about the, 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 the people in their community, with their birthdays and the obits and the who joined the military. You can physically reach out and, and tag them in your social media posts and get their attention. So it's, it's a great way to kind of be an influence in your community, as well as, as just have the most up-to-date information as possible. Social networking helps promote DAB's voice and content. One thing to say here, uh, whereas we do recognize how important social media is in today's communication, we do want to um, keep in mind that 
as a page on behalf of our chapter or our department, we are representing and speaking for DAV. So whatever you post or however you interact as an admin of that page or as a representative of DAV must be in line with our constitution and bylaws. Just something to remember. You are DAV's voice when you're on social. Some of the different platforms. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, uh, LinkedIn, we even have a Pinterest. Uh, so if you have one of those for your you know, local, local page, uh, or all of them, it's a quick, easy share from national as well. So, let's see. Like Todd, I have glasses, but sometimes it's hard to read these notes. Uh, regular management is vitally important. So if you do go out there and you know, start up all of these different accounts, make sure you're staying on top of it, okay? If you're not sure if you can do that, start with one and then branch out. Um, designated account managers are responsible for the content. So again, make sure whatever's being put out as DAV falls within our constitution and, and bylaws. And any page left open for more than a year with no activity should probably be deactivated. Because again, that page is gonna serve as a, as a it's gonna serve as how they see that DAV. And so if they don't see the social aspect having any updates, they are gonna be less inclined to get involved, involved because they're not gonna feel like you're involved, whether you are or not. So perception is reality, remember that old adage? Who has downloaded the convention app? Oh, that makes my heart hurt. Thanks, boss man. Boss man downloaded it. Uh, <laughs> so new, new this year, we have a convention app, and we're actually we're trying it out. And this is just kind of a pushing forward with a, our social strategies um, because we don't want to overwhelm all of our platforms with all convention all the time because we have a lot of followers who are not here, right? So we have other information on our Twitter and our Facebook going out about job fairs, legislative things, stuff like that. So we're trying out this app, and if, if you just go to your app store for Droid or, or Android or um, Apple, it's DAV National Convention, and you can find it, and it has our fancy little logo. So don't feel like you have to you know, do this or anything, but um, what we're trying with it is Again, it allows you to post those real-time updates, and it allows you to make sure that everybody that in, who is invested in the success of DAV is aware of what DAV is doing. And it, it, it really, it builds that trust between the two. Also, just a note about the app, because we're trying it out, and I have kind of taken it on as a pet project. Uh, if you do find anything, any glitches or any issues with the app, please email me. My email is going to be at the end of this uh, because we, we want to, I'm compiling a list of any issues we run into so that we can address it. So just heads up. Tips and tricks. Engage. Who is active on social media? Like not as an admin, but like as your own personal account. Okay. So if you post something reach something, comment on something, share an idea, and you don't get a response, how does that feel? Feels like they don't care, right? Again, perception is reality. So if, you're, if your social accounts aren't active, they're not gonna believe that you're active. You might be the most active member we have, but from what they see, their tunnel vision on your social account, if you're not engaging with them, they're not gonna feel like you are actually engaged in real life either. Don't be a robot, and by that, I think that's pretty self-explanatory, but I put that in there as far as don't just give a copy and paste to answer. Okay, thank you for contacting DAV, blah, 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 blah. Again, it, it, it hurts that perception of how engaged we really are, and it kind of defeats the purpose of having that two-way communication. Tag, tag, tag. Verify with a blue check mark. Is everybody familiar with the blue check mark? Few? Okay. The blue check mark is how Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook le legitimize 
professional accounts, okay? So you have to jump through hoops to get one. So any Joe Schmo can't say that they're DAV. So when you are tagging a reporter or a local veteran leader or your city government or your national government, <laughs> there's, there's a lot of fake accounts for national government officials, uh, make sure it has that blue check mark before you just tag it. Otherwise, you might end up going down a rabbit hole with someone who is not who they say they are. Okay, so just kind of keep that in mind. Look for the blue check mark. The check mark means it has been authenticated. Clear? Okay. And hashtags. I'm going to plug the app one more time. In the app, under the Twitter function, you can actually search for DAV Tampa 21. All you do is you click on it and then it'll show you everything that anyone has posted with that hashtag. Very similar to how Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, all work by following the hashtag. A hashtag really is, it's an organizer for your post. You'll notice a lot of our DAV posts have keep the promise, especially if it has to do with legislation. If you go on one of those platforms, you click on keep the promise, it's gonna show you everything that has ever been posted with that hashtag. That's the purpose of hashtags. So if you're posting about disabled veterans, hashtag disabled veterans. Just keep it, consent, uh, keep it consistent, um, you know, and <laughs> don't, don't be one of those that, you know, hashtag DAV is for all veterans, we love you all, let's keep going, you know, we'll see you at next convention, like all one hashtag, that's not, that's not gonna work. Um, but, you know, veterans, hashtag DAV, hashtag uh, DAV Tampa 21. Uh, th those are the kinds of things that you want to put in your post because again, if somebody's going through and they happen upon your Twitter account and they like what they saw and they click that hashtag that says DAV chapter 38 and then they see everything that's ever been hashtagged with DAV chapter 38, it's an easy search function. So take advantage of that uh, while you're on there. I'm going to go back to the engagement uh, soapbox. Make sure you're checking these accounts daily, okay? You don't necessarily need to carve out time to respond in, in detail daily. You should do that every couple of days, though. But make sure that you're going on there daily. Multiple reasons for this. Um, again, that, that whole engagement with your followers. If they don't feel like you're engaged on social, they're not going to feel like you're engaged in real life. The other thing is negativity, um, inappropriate comments, um, or an emergency. Believe it or not, some people will take it to social if they're having an emergency. So just you know, get on there and, and check it. Make sure that you're involved with it. Check your messages, check your inbox, and delete anything that's inappropriate or against our Constitution and bylaws, okay? That's not censorship, they're using bad words and things like that. If it's ugly, just take it off, but check it. Otherwise, it can go unchecked and we all know where that can kind of go. That can go downhill really quickly in the social media world. Fancy little clip art there, yeah. Thank you. All right, some tools that we have at your disposal on DAV.org. We have the DAV Publicity Guide. That has information on Todd's briefing, information on my briefing. Um, it, it, it really lays the groundwork if you need to go back and check something. It's a guide though, so again, if you have specific questions, you might wanna reach out to us. An email to remember that I'm making a mental note to add to this presentation is social at DAV.org. Maybe it is in here. It is in there. There it is. Thank you, past me. Social at DAV.org. That goes to anybody with access to that account, basically our department. So then, you know, if I'm on PTO or, you know, you email Todd and he can't answer, um, it's, it's a group thing. So when in doubt. Now, this guidelines and code of conduct for social media communications, if you've been to one of these before, you know that we've been working on this for a while. Um, it's almost across the finish line, so look for it soon. We will have it online when it is. Um, and it, it has all kinds of details, it, again, kind of covering yourself uh, legally, uh, with IG, all those things. So once that's out, uh, we'll probably make an announcement about it. And so when it is, Download it, save it, refer to it, make sure everybody else reads it, and it's really just going to keep us all on the same page, and it's going to keep our voice consistent. 
The rules. There's rules to everything, isn't there? Again, you're a representative of DAV, so your opinion on something isn't necessarily the place to put it when it's on a DAV social, okay? So just keep that in mind. Um, obviously, we want to advocate for veterans' issues, but again, we're going to go back to the Constitution and bylaws whenever it comes to what exactly we are saying about those issues, okay? So resolutions are very important to know and understand. Uh, we don't get political. We don't get partisan. Um, we don't... Uh, my brain just drew a blank on... We don't campaign for particular individuals uh, or groups. So just remember that from your social aspect. And don't get argumentative. If somebody's being ugly and coming at you, just, sorry, you feel that way and walk away. All right, there's no need to get into a battle with it. If, you've, if they've brought you a problem and you've tried to fix it and they still wanna argue with you, just leave it at that, okay? It's probably good advice outside of social too, but I'm not anybody's mother in here. <laughs> Q&A time.